Hello students, in this video we are going to learn about regulation of respiration and respiratory disorders. First we are going to see about regulation of respiration. So what do you mean by regulation of respiration? Where the center for regulation of respiration occurs? The center for regulation of respiration occurs at medulla oblongata in the brain. That is called as respiratory rhythm center which is responsible for regulation of respiration. So near to this respiratory center, pons viroli of the brain, there is another one center that is called as pneumotaxic center. It will moderate the function of respiratory rhythm center for normal breathing. And closer to this pneumotaxic center, there is another one center that is called as chemosensitive area. So this will uh, highly sensitive. This area is highly sensitive to carbon dioxide and hydrogen ion concentration in the blood and apart from these centers there are receptors which are associated with aortic arch and carotid arteries aortic arch are the blood vessel which carries blood to the lower parts of our body and carotid artery are the blood vessel which carry the blood to the upper part of our body so this uh, receptors which are found in aortic arch and carotid artery send necessary signals to the rhythm center for remedial action. So if, if carbon dioxide uh, concentration and hydrogen ion concentration is high in our blood, so automatically this receptors immediately send the information to the uh, respiratory center in the medulla oblongata. So thereby immediately it will expel out the carbon dioxide. So next we are going to see about problems in oxygen transport. At an elevation of about 8000 feet, the atmospheric pressure and partial oxygen pressure is very low. So, if a person travels quickly from sea level to elevated region, so suddenly he will respond to the symptoms of acute mountain sickness. So, what are the symptoms uh, found in this acute mountain sickness are headache, shortness of breath, nausea and dizziness so why these symptoms are occurring means because of poor binding of oxygen with the hemoglobin because of the uh, low partial oxygen pressure there will be poor binding of oxygen with the hemoglobin but at the same time if a person moves to the mountain from sea level on a long term basis so if a person is going to mountain from the sea level to stay in the mountain that means for a long term basis the automatically his body begins to make respiratory and hematopoietic adjustment so how it will do this adjustment means so here the kidneys accelerate the production of erythropoietin hormone so this hormone in turn stimulates the bone marrow to produce more number of RBCs. So as there is more number of RBCs, automatically that will equalize the oxygen content in the blood, in the body. So if it happens in the reverse direction, what will happen? That means when a person descends deep into the sea. So what will happen? The pressure in the surrounding water increases. So that by it will cause... Uh, the decrease in volume of the lungs. So as the volume of the lungs decreases, the partial pressure of the gases increases inside the lungs. So that will tend to drive additional oxygen into the circulation. So it is one of the beneficial thing. But there is a risk of driving nitrogen gas into the circulation. So at the normal partial oxygen pressure, nitrogen won't mix with the uh, blood. But as the pressure increases at the depth of the sea, what will happen? It will drive the nitrogen gas into the circulation. Okay, because of the increase in pressure. This will increase the blood nitrogen content. So that will lead to nitrogen narcosis. So what do you mean by narcosis? Means narcosis is nothing but drowsiness or unconsciousness produced by drugs. So here because of nitrogen, it will lead to unconsciousness and rosiness or rosiness of a person when a diver ascends to the surface too quickly so what will happen means that will lead to a condition called bends or decompression sickness so why it is happening means here the nitrogen comes out from the body solution so uh, still so because of that 
the nitrogen bubbles will form in the blood if the bubbles are small so it is not harmful but if the bubbles are large so that will lodge in the small capillaries so thus it blocks the blood flow and also it presses on nerve endings so this leads to pain in joints and muscles and also it causes neurological problems including stroke so mostly this type of risk that is risk of nitrogen arcosis bends these are common in scuba divers the next carbon dioxide poisoning so what do you mean by carbon dioxide poisoning it is a demand of oxygen increases as the oxygen level decreases in the blood so that lead to suffocation and also the skin turns into bluish black next we are going to see about disorders of respiratory system so what are the disorders how it is occurring means respiratory system is highly affected by environmental occupational and personal and social factors so these factors are responsible for number of respiratory disorders so here we are going to see some of the disorders first we are going to see about asthma it is characterized by a narrowing and inflammation of bronchi and bronchioles so this leads to difficulty in breathing so how this asthma is causing means because of common allergens like dust drugs pollen grains and some food items like fish prawn and certain fruits this is the normal bronchial so if a person is affected with by asthma then the bronchi will be like this so there will be inflammation and there will be accumulation of mucus so this will leads to difficulties in breathing because of narrow air passage next we are going to see about emphysema so emphysema is a chronic breathlessness so chronic means so it lacca gradually so there will be gradual breakdown of thin wall of alveoli so this will decrease the total surface area of gaseous exchange that means the alveoli become widened that condition is called as emphysema what are the major cause for this disease is cigarette smoking so this will reduces the respiratory surface of alveolar wall usually there are many number of sac like structure in the lungs so because of cigarette smoking the thin wall gets disintegrate so thereby the alveoli become more wider and reduces the surface area of gaseous exchange that condition is called as emphysema so next we are going to see about bronchitis bronchi when it gets inflated due to pollution smoke and cigarette smoking that will cause bronchitis the symptoms are cough shortness of breath sputum in lungs so this is normal bronchi so if the bronchi is affected with bronchitis so here there will be inflammation and this is the sputum that means mucus accumulation of mucus in the bronchi so that by it will uh, lead to narrowing of the bronchi bronchi so the, that leads to difficulty in breathing next we are going to see about pneumonia so pneumonia is nothing but inflammation of lungs so how this inflammation is occurring means due to infection by bacteria or virus the common symptoms of pneumonia are sputum production that is excess amount of mucus production then nasal congestion shortness of breath sore throat so these are the symptoms of pneumonia so this is the normal alveoli and if there is a fluid accumulation that means the fluid gets filled in this space so that by it reduces the transportation of gases exchange of gases so the accumulation of fluid in the alveolar sac that condition is called as pneumonia next we are going to see about tuberculosis tuberculosis is mainly caused by the bacterium mycobacterium tuberculae so this infection is mainly occur in the lungs or in bones and because of the infection of bacteria there will be collection of fluid between the lungs and the chest wall so this is the main complication of this disease because of the infection of the mycobacterium tuberculosis it caused many lesions on the lungs lesions are nothing but wounds so that way there will be a fluid collection between the lungs and the chest wall so that will leads to difficulty in breathing and leads to coughing etc so next we are going to see about occupational respiratory disorder 
so this is a uh, cause because of one's occupation of working in a, in industries like grinding or stone breaking construction sites cotton industries etc so the dust produced uh, will affect that respiratory tract when the person is uh, exposed longer to this that will leads to inflammation that leads to fibrosis of lungs so the silicosis and asbestosis are the occupational respiratory disease so this are caused because of inhalation of particles of silica from sand grinding and asbestosis into the respiratory tract and the workers working in such industries must wear protective masks thus we can prevent it next we are going to see about effects of smoking so today due to curiosity excitement or adventure youngsters start to smoke and later get addicted to smoking so the researcher says that 80% of lung cancer is caused due to cigarette smoking so what do you mean by smoking smoking is nothing but inhaling of smoke from burning tobacco that is called as smoking so this uh, burning tobacco produces thousands of chemicals so few important chemicals are given here they are nicotine tar carbon monoxide ammonia sulfur dioxide and small quantity of arsenic this carbon monoxide and nicotine damage the cardiovascular system that is blood vascular system the blood vessels and the heart then tar tar damages the gaseous exchange system that means it affects the alveoli of the lungs next nicotine it will cause addiction and it acts as a stimulant it makes the heart beat faster and also it causes narrowing of blood vessels thereby it increases the blood pressure that leads to coronary heart diseases the carbon monoxide produced by burning of tobacco will reduces the oxygen supply because carbon monoxide is more has more affinity towards hemoglobin than oxygen so if carbon monoxide is present in the inhaling air then hemoglobin automatically combines with carbon monoxide not with the oxygen thus it reduces oxygen supply then effects so what are the effects means the lung cancer the cancer of mouth larynx it is common more common in smokers and non smokers and smoking also causes cancer of stomach pancreas bladder and also it lowers the sperm count in men and also it causes lung diseases by damaging airways and alveoli that results in emphysema and chronic bronchitis so these diseases along with asthma are often referred as chronic obstructive pulmonary disease that is copd when a a person smokes nearly 85% of smoke released is inhaled by the smoker himself and others in the vicinity who are all nearby to that smoker so that is called as passive smokers okay so this passive smokers also affected by these toxic substances and also they are affected by these diseases so how can we prevent it means so we can prevent it by giving guidance and counseling to the users to withdraw this habit thank you students